well, I'm making another video. I crawled off the dike there. Uh, the other operator and I, uh, well, I noticed him first, but uh, I dug a little tickle ditch to drain this water out of this burrow pit here, just so that we're not working in water when we're throwing all this mud back in. Well, I didn't think there'd be any fish around here, but there's some kind of little, I don't think they're minnows, he, he said they might be, but I've seen they got a little red stripe on them. And I don't think we got rainbow trout here, maybe there's baby carp for I, all I know. But anyways, there's little baby fishes in there, they're tiny, but uh, they're swimming against a little current of these little tickle ditches, trying to get up here. And uh, I don't want to kill them. I just want to let them go. There's something flapping in here. Uh, they're probably already dead. Close to it at least. So I'm going to make a little system of ditches so at least while we uh, squeeze the mud in here, they have some sort of chance at getting out. Uh, take this bucket. And, oh, I don't want to squish anything. i put it over here. That way, as we squeeze the water out, then the fish have somewhere to run to, or in this case, swim to. If they can swim against that little current, then, uh, and there's hardly any water. I mean, there was hardly even an inch of water for them to swim in, and these little guys about maybe six, seven centimeters long were swimming against it and swimming uh, into this little uh, puddle. So, it's gonna clean us out ever so carefully. Oh, there's a frog. That is... I don't know if you can see them. That's called a Canadian toad. It's either Canadian or an American toad. And believe it or not, that's their name. That's not their Latin name, but that's the name of them. I uh, used to have pet frogs, and I got really interested in all the different types and that. And I can even recognize them by the call they make. And at this time of year, uh, both uh, uh, species of toad are uh, mating. And, uh, yeah, so I'm a nature hugger, or tree lover, whatever you want to call me, tree leaf licker. <laughs> but, uh, I don't like killing things, I'll put it that, that much. Especially little froggies that are cute. So, I'm just gonna make sure that they have some way of getting out. Lots of frogs around here. <laughs> okay, bye. This is why I don't go fishing anymore. Cause I, uh, I used to go fishing, but uh, I find it too hard to go and kill something. I'd rather just watch what they do in nature. Yeah, you're not supposed to let water drain out without silt fencing and stuff like that, but nobody's putting up silt fencing and we got to get this done, so we're always in between rainstorms here. But I mean, the Red River, the Assiniboine River, the Sala River, they're all full of mud and silt, so this is nothing new. The only time they're not full of mud and silt is either when they're dried up or uh, sometimes in the winter, if the river's low and there's not a whole lot of water going through it, it actually gets a little bit clear. It actually gets kind of blue. There's some little fish there. Every now and then you might see a little silver sparkle. Just trying to adjust the camera here for you guys. I'm using the head mount today. I couldn't figure out a good way to mount the clamp and it likes to drift with the machine vibration and whatnot, so I have to get that suction cup one, uh, like, or suction cup mount like some guys use. I'm gonna take another swipe here, I hope I don't kill too many of them. Take some of this loon shit out.
Maybe they're after the little bit of algae that's growing in here. I know smaller fish go after that. I think minnows and that are more of a vegetarian than they are anything else. Algae is one of those building blocks of life, I believe. Just like amino acids. Yeah, I watch a lot of nature shows, but there's never anything good on TV anymore. I hate sitcoms. Except Big Bang Theory, that's kind of funny. Reminds me of Revenge of the Nerds. Got one big pool here, and I would like it so that this could all drain one way or another. So we'll just start pushing that clay in, squeezing the water out. It's a little bit easier to work all this stuff. All this gunk. If you guys like my videos, uh, feel free to go on YouTube there and uh, give them a good rating, put some pleasant comments. There's always people that don't. I'm not really supposed to take any videos of equipment at work here, but I kind of like to remember some of this stuff that I do. Especially for when I get old, retired or whatever. Nobody was able to do this in the 60s, would have been nice. Would have been nice to see an excavator cam from the uh, 60s when they were using uh, cable machinery. an angle here. I'm going to try and get myself half-ass leveled off. I can't correct it. I don't have a tilt on this one, as I was saying earlier. So, I'll just back up. Uh, wallow my way into the mud. I also like making these videos so members of the general public can understand a little bit of the work we do. We're not just guys wearing hard hats standing around holding up a shovel. We're, uh, we're the ones responsible for sometimes keeping your feet dry, I guess. We're the ones that build the roads. Sadly, we're not the ones that maintain them. That's the Department of Holidays. I mean, highways. 
they don't know how to maintain a road. They never will. They never. They never will. Just kind of watch it drain a little bit. See if I gotta take any more out. And see the odd little splasher there. I don't think we have trout here. And the other, the cat operator there thought maybe there are trout, but but we don't. I don't think we have that in these silty rivers. I think they like clear water only. some tadpoles in there too. We have a lot of frogs here in Manitoba so uh, we get quite a few tadpoles. Little black guys are pretty cute. Don't swim as good as fish but uh, they're kind of cute. Another one splash. See the way I put my mud over here was so that it helps squeeze the water out a little bit. Now I might squeeze a few fishes, uh, not the way I want to, but uh, it helps get with the water moving.
think I'm gonna go climb back on the dike there and keep working away, otherwise somebody's gonna get bitchy. This work is all hourly, so I'm not too whiny if you go and fart around because it says gravy. It's not a hard job. Just throwing a bit of mud around. Surprisingly, I'm not sinking at all, but it's uh, it's all clay here. It's not like out in Portage there, Portage or Prairie, where there was a lot of silt. I mean, just stupid amounts of silt. I need backup alarms to cancel it. You don't need backup alarms on excavators. That's a stupid idea. Well, it's not too stupid, but it sure is annoying when there's nobody else around. squeezed out and those little minnows have somewhere to run to or fishes or whatever they are. Carp. I don't know, I think carp are bigger but everything's small when it's a uh, baby. So here we are back to the mud pile. seeing a machine working so hard there. It was grease regularly, but I actually see smoke coming out of the joints. I don't know if it was shitty grease or maybe just because a machine was working that hard. They were digging a 10 meter deep uh, excavation with a 450 uh, Samsung. And uh, I actually saw smoke coming out of uh, the joint uh, where the boom uh, cylinder joins to the boom there. It wasn't even rainy. I've seen it. I've seen hydraulic cylinders steam in the rain, but uh, I've never seen joints smoke before, or uh, not joints but pins. Maybe it was old grease 
grease or something. Maybe it didn't quite take the grease that he had pumped in there. So I know that operator always greased everything every day. Still don't think I've seen an operator as good as him. running Coring 866Es, that was before this uh, put pilot hydraulics, I don't know if they ever did have pilot hydraulics on the Coring manufactured machines, but at some point Coring started buying machines from, I think it was IHI in Japan, and they uh, didn't, they had pilot hydraulics instead of uh, air over hydraulic, but you can run those air over hydraulic controls like nothing. The guy was amazing and his ability to grade, grade a sewer ditch was just spectacular. And then the way he would slope his uh, the walls for the trench, it wasn't really a trench in Alberta, they call them a ditch. But the way he could slope those walls and everything, it was like a piece of artwork. He almost hated the idea of having to go and backfill any uh, any of these holes that he dug, any of these ditches, because they just look like a piece of artwork. See about sticky? That's topsoil there. It's sticking. Our topsoil here is black, so it's pretty easy to distinguish from everything else. Let's back up here. Despite what the tree huggers, the hippies, and the leaf lickers would tell you, us equipment operators, we do care. We care quite a bit, actually. A lot of these guys like going fishing or hunting and stuff like that. They don't want to wipe everything out. I think that's enough ranting here. <laughs> 